Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? My name is Brandon Sella with the sweet Balor Club shirt. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I'm going to be doing a little special video. It's going to be divided into three parts. This is the first part. This is like the, the setup part, I guess, to the video. It's going to be about wrestling, more specifically the fantasy aspect of wrestling. As a wrestling fan, as most wrestling fans, we like to think of what ifs. Like really any fan. If you're talking about football, you think, oh, what would happen if the 72 Dolphins faced the 85 uh, Bears? Or what if, you know, LT played in the modern day and stuff like that? In basketball, it's what if Wilt faced Shaq? 96 Bulls versus the Warriors, uh, Jordan versus Kobe, all that stuff. In wrestling, it's more of, you know, stuff like the matchups. Um, what would happen if Stone Cold Steve Austin faced Hollywood Hulk Hogan, or Hulk Hogan, whichever version, I guess, I don't know. Uh, or if John Cena faced Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold versus CM Punk, Andre the Giant versus Big Show, all these dream matchups, and it can never happen because of obvious reasons, you know, people decease, uh, people retire, injuries, whatever, people are working different promotions and stuff like that. So, what I wanted to come up with was, what would be the greatest professional wrestling card ever of all time? I said about this with a mind of, you know, let me try and find something for everyone. Now, here are a few rules, a few ground rules. First off, we can't have it in, um, in just a regular old venue. The venue that's set up is Arlington Stadium or, or AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Next thing, um, all wrestlers are available. What I mean by that is, you know, there are no tie-ups as far as contracts and stuff like that. Everyone's alive. Everyone isn't injured, they're, everyone's healthy, they're ready to go, and they're all in their prime. Third thing, we have to structure this in some fashion. It can't just be matches and matches and matches. So we're gonna have it in three parts, like these sets of videos. Uh, we have the pre-show, which will consist of three matches. We'll have the main show part one, I guess, uh, which will consist of five matches, and then an intermission, and then five more matches, which will include the main event. Sure, there's like two main events. I guess like the main event of the first part and the main event of the second part. I don't really want to kind of divvy it up like that. Just one main event, but we have it in um, in set parts. Also, we have to do this from 6 p.m. basically until midnight. I know it's a long ass show, but it's the greatest pro wrestling show ever created. I think that everyone will be okay with you know waiting six hours especially since we have an intermission especially since we have a pre-show then the last thing this has to happen under the wwe umbrella i know it's you know eh, you know, having a show i think the best show set up in wwe it brings its problems that like booking and stuff but hey i'm the booker so we're good you can't have it wcw you can't have an ecw or ring of honor in new japan when you think of pro wrestling you think of wwe so it only makes sense for it to be a wwe product and with that being said it has to be a wrestlemania i don't care like you know uh like it's its own standoff wrestlemania i guess the like i don't know it's like not it's not canon you know how you have like comic books and stuff that there's the actual story and then there's like alternate stuff this is the alternate wrestlemania okay like there is no set time i guess it's a time traveling wrestlemania sure whatever with that all being said let's get down to you know who's involved and i have my wonderful sheet with me so first off uh commentators so we have jim ross jr little jr jerry the king lawler and mauro ronaldo Ronaldo, yeah that's how you say it and then for pre-show we have jim Cornette and matt striker now as far as that goes like i you know my dad was saying oh what about michael cole well michael cole's kind of crap okay don't get me wrong you know you know he um he presents some type of value as far as you know recognizable face or recognizable voice but we have jr we have Jerry the King Lawler, you know, and, and as far as Jerry the King Lawler is concerned, we can't have like 
these great play-by-play -play guys, you know, junto together, okay? Um, for basketball, you can't have Mike Breen with Marv Albert. It doesn't work like that. You can't have, like, commentators. You have to have a former basketball player. That's why, they, that's why it's usually, like, you know, uh, Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, and Jeff Van Gundy. That's the team. Or Steve Smith and you know Marv Albert or Reggie Miller and Marv Albert that's how it works for wrestling it's it's kind of the same if you think about it Taz was paired up with Joey Styles uh, you know Jim Ross is paired up with Jerry the King Lawler it works like that Michael Cole's paired up with JBL horrible commentary team but that's regardless that's how that's how it works so there's that then we also have um, we have to get Gene Okerlund involved somehow so he's gonna be interviewing the wrestlers you know maybe do like for the pre-show, maybe he does like some, you know, interviews here and there, maybe like after the matches, like, hey, what did you think about this? You know, that kind of thing. So we have that. And then as far as ring announcers, this was a tough one. So we have Lillian Garcia doing the pre-show and the national anthem. And we have Howard Finkel doing the main show. No disrespect to Lynn Garcia. She, she's great at her job and, you know, tremendous ring announcer. But it's the Fink, okay? He's a Hall of Famer, and it would only be right to have Howard Finkel call, you know, and bring the Undertaker or, who, or whoever, Stone Cold Steve Austin, out to the ring. It's only fair. Let's, um, let's get on with the matches. So, the, the pre-show starts off, you know, so, you know, just, hey, welcome to the WrestleMania pre-show. <sighs> you know, that kind of thing. And we start off with a six-man tag. We have The New Day, Kofi Kingston, Big E, and Xavier Woods versus the IWGP Tag Team, well, IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, and the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, Kenny Omega, the Elite. The New Day versus the Elite. And the New Day, they come out and uh, riding on a ma magical unicorn with bootios, you know, like being sprayed everywhere, some entrance. And then the Elite come out, they have their Bullet Club uh, brethren, they have Cody Hall, Bad Luck Fale, Tamatonga, and Yujiro T Takahashi. They all come out and the match starts and it's very simple, you know, just like uh, the Young Bucks get their stuff in, they get to do indie takers and stuff like that, but the finish is pretty much simple. What we have is, is that the, the uh, New Day members, you know, Kofi uh, takes out both the Young Bucks, Big E comes in and, you know, tackles a bunch of, like, he tackles like Tonga and Yujiro. But Cody Hall and Fale distract Xavier Woods and Kenny pulls the trunks. One, two, three. The Elite win via a, a shady pinfall. And that's how we start off uh, the pre-show. We have the Elite going over the New Day. Another dream match. You know, one, the first dream match of the night. And we have it settled there. Could I have had the New Day win? Of course. But no one knows the Elite as far as Americans go generally speaking so i think it would be best to have the elite you know in a shady way beat the new day so there's that so the next bout is a survivor series traditional survivor series tag team match elimination with tna knockouts tag team champions angelina love velvet sky along with candace michelle and michelle mccool versus the four horse women sasha banks bailey Car um, I almost said Carmella, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch. And we have the four horsewomen uh, come out on top, you know, um, people, uh, the beautiful people, especially Velvet Sky eliminates uh, Becky or maybe Charlotte or whoever, and they come back, you know, they eliminate Michelle McCool, they eliminate Angelina Love, then it uh, boils down to Sasha Banks versus Velvet and uh, Candice Michelle. Uh, they beat uh, Sasha Banks beat Velvet Sky, then Sasha Banks makes Candice Michelle tap out to the bank statement, and you know the four horsewomen they come out and they do the thing like they did at um, at NXT Takeover. They hold up the four like the four horsemen, and 
that's the end of the match. So, you know, I figure that having the four horsewomen come out, they get to have some exposure, uh, as well as the TNA women, they have exposure, and then we get to see Candice Michelle and Michelle McCool come back, but we also get to see the in-ring talents of the four horsewomen. And finally, the last match of the pre-show is an invitational 30-man battle royal. Now this match is basically like everyone that I forgot about or everyone that I needed to cram into this show, I put them in there. No disrespect to these guys, I just didn't really have anything for them. So let me read out the list. <clears throat> All right, we got The Miz, Kazuchika Okada, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Ultimate Warrior, Finn Balor, or Prince Devitt, whatever. Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, Batista, Andre the Giant, Big Show, King Kong Bundy, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, JBL, Mark Henry, Dolph Ziggler, Jake Roberts, Bruno Sammartino, Joshin Thunder Liger, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Roman Reigns, Sergeant Slaughter, Harley Race, China, I'll get that in a second, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bob Backlund, Roddy Piper, Sabu, and Seth Rollins. <sighs> I can't keep track of everything that happens in this match, but I do have some spots. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, everyone comes out, uh, you know, with together. They all come out together except for The Miz. The Miz has his own entrance and gets taken out by Dean Ambrose from the back and Dean Ambrose comes in and replaces The Miz. So we have a little funny thing to add to this Battle Royal. That's one thing. Uh, the Shield reunite and they do the triple powerbomb and they powerbomb King Kong Bundy out of the ring. They celebrate and then they start fighting each other again. So is that. Uh, we have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn eliminating each other and they start duking it out again. You know, the whole punching thing that they like to do uh, that just goes on for like a minute. It gets tiring, but I think, you know, we when we shove it in there, it will be entertaining. Uh, we have the Bullet Club of uh, Finn, Carl, and Luke being eliminated by the New Japan guys. Shinsuke, Hiroshi, and Kazuchika Okada, they eliminate him. And, you know, it's basically so that we can pay respect to the Japanese wrestlers because they could have been in the main show, all these guys but I just didn't really have anything for them. And Okada versus Tanahashi is a rivalry that, that's awesome and they have incredible five-star matches. So we can't really disrespect them. And Shinsuke is an animal in itself. So having them eliminate Bullet Club is like, okay, you know, we respect you guys and we, you know, and we have to because they're just so awesome. You know, check, check them out when you can, check out Kazuchika Okada, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Shinsuke Nakamura. If you look up Tanahashi versus Okada, or Nakamura versus AJ Styles, or whoever, it's guaranteed to be an awesome match. Check it out. So there's that. Then we have China throwing out Mark Henry, only to then be eliminated from the back by JBL. We get some good heat on JBL. We show China, you know, overpowering the you know the monster the world's strongest man that is mark henry we get these people over uh the sandman tommy dreamer and sabu all bring weapons and start clobbering everyone with them sandman starts whipping people with cane and stuff like that sabu does his thing where it's like a leg drop but he uses the chair and it's awesome tommy dreamer gets like a trash can or something and beats everyone with it so all that but the the last thing, the one thing that I really want in this match, Andre the Giant winning the Battle Royal by throwing Big Show or, you know, pushing him over the top rope. Andre the Giant winning this Battle Royal and, you know, the Big Show comes back in, they shake hands, Big Show honors uh, Andre the Giant, he lets him have the ring to himself, and then that's the end of the match. So that's the end of the pre-show if you like uh you know this series so far be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and remember that part two will be coming soon that'll be the main show part one so stay tuned and i'm brand so and you guys have a good one